Hello, this is Scott from Optics Realm. It's October 2011. This is my ZMAX tutorial number three. We're going to talk about negative lengths in ZMAX today. And in particular, I want to discuss when negative lengths are errors and when they are appropriate. It's going to be a short one today. So in review, when you enter a prescription in ZMAX, you enter surface by surface into the spreadsheet, radius, thickness, optical material, uh, semi-diameters. And again, it progresses in the order that the light is going to see it. So there's some potentials for getting negative edge thicknesses. In particular, if your center thickness, and I just went in on this Cook triplet here and made the center thickness too thin, you can see that this edge thickness here is actually negative. And if you're to blow this up, you see the rays, they don't care. ZMAX does not care that this is a physically unrealizable lens. The ray comes along, it hits surface one, which is this one here, up here it's here, and then it progresses through the thickness, which it's going negative, and then it goes, it refracts on this back surface. And ZMAX will go along its merrily way. It's up to the user to check for these realistic, uh, unrealistic geometries. And a quick comment on edge thickness guidelines when you're doing design or setting a system. So the edge thickness, that's this thickness here. And it's uh, a function of your radius at the front, the radius of the back, and what your center thickness is from here to here. So I've drawn two beams. You've got an on-axis beam in red and an off-axis beam in a light green. So the footprint is this diameter here. Now, it's not necessarily the on-axis, but it's going to include beam wander. If, you, if you're not near a stop or a pupil, your on-axis beam is going to wander up. You want to make your coding, dia coding aperture a little bit oversized. You want to make it a little bit larger. That's shown here in green. And you do this just in case tolerances or beams are larger. Uh, you want the coding there, the AR and I reflection coding. And then you want to oversize it a little bit for the diameter. Now, why, do, why would you do that? Um, you would want your coating aperture to be some percentage of the diameter. And for commercial, you want roughly 80%. 80, 80 Precision is more like 95%. And the risk you run there is when you put this in the coating chamber, the difference between the coating aperture and your diameter is going to be held in place by a piece of metal. Coating chambers operate at elevated temperatures and it could be such that your metal grows faster than your lens and your lens falls through your coating chamber. If you need greater than 95 percent, if you need your coating to go all the way out to the edge of the aperture, you make this part oversized and then you coat. So let me go back to my first data point here. Your final lens should have a minimum edge thickness of one millimeter here to here. And more realistically, it would you'd like more like a, a, a one and a half millimeter. So and why one and a half millimeter? Well, it could be that you've got tight centration tolerances, tight wedge tolerances on this lens, and you've got to edge it down after you put the spheres on it. And if in manufacturing, even though you've not designed a, a lens to have greater than a, a one millimeter edge, edge thickness, in manufacturing you don't know what the process is. They could have to oversize this part and make it a very thin edge and you increase your risks of chipping and you reduce your yield, driving up the, the um, expense of the part. So try and get a millimeter and a half edge thickness and you want to allow for uh, margin from footprint to coating, coating to diameter. So let's talk about some negative thicknesses that are okay, and I've put this in green here. If you've got a reflective mirror, so for instance, you've got light that starts here, this is the Hubble, hits a mirror, and it's going to come back on itself. This is a negative thickness. And again, we're using a Cartesian coordinate system. So you can see after this, this first mirror here, your thickness is a negative 4.9 meters. It's perfectly acceptable. This is a case where you want a negative thickness. Now we have to worry about negative focal lengths. And there are two meanings to focal length here that you're going to have to be aware of. First of all, if you have a single lens, like this equiconcave lens here, 
you put a collimated beam in and the light is going to diverge coming out. You trace these rays back, you're going to get a negative focal length. So in this case, you'll say the focal length is a negative 19 millimeters. There is another case where you could have a converging wavefront, a converging beam, where you come to a focus, and I'm showing this here, spherical aberration, let's ignore that. But in this case, this lens, this first one, E1, comes to a focus. We diverge after focus to another lens in an image. Well, this is a positive focal length because it's converging. ZMAX does not model it that way. Because your marginal ray angle is negative in this case, the focal length, according to ZMAX, is going to be negative. This is a converging beam with a negative 33 millimeter focal length. And again, this intermediate image is flipping the sign on the focal length. So you have to be careful. In this case, you know, you want to optimize this. So look, for instance, I've got spherical aberration here. I want to get rid of the spherical. I have to constrain focal length to be negative 33. That's it. Uh, I know it's short and sweet. Thanks for tuning in, and you can contact me at uh, opticsrealm.com. Thank you so much.